Hi everyone, welcome to the Rose Hip Island video diary. This is the May video for 2022. Welcome everyone. My name is Hannah and I record my videos from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I'm a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband and our two daughters, a cat, 10 chickens and a few fish. Thank you so much for joining me and taking some of the time in your busy life to spend it with me. I really, really appreciate it. My videos are all about yarn, knitting, spinning, and other making and creative things, making with my hands, and um, just an opportunity for me to sit down and relax and show things that I've been working on and share some of the things that I really am passionate about with other people that might be interested in the same things. And I hope that my videos provide some inspiration and um, just a little bit of break from everyday life for some of you out there. It is a gray, cold and a little bit wet Sunday afternoon here in Northern Tasmania. And I am all rugged up, <laughs> sitting under a blanket actually, here in my studio where I normally record, surrounded by all of my tools and materials for my making. Today I am wearing my Vintosul jumper, a design by Jennifer Steingast that I have made in Lethlopi. Um, and it is a jumper that almost always makes me feel really cozy and um, it's sort of like a comforting jumper in a way it just makes me feel safe I know that might sound ridiculous but it's just it's like wearing a hug in a way and I, I really love it and for uh, days like today where you just want to stay under a blanket all day this jumper is just the perfect thing to wear so that's what I'm wearing and I have my tea with me and I'm under the blanket, like I said, so I'm all cozy and snugly here, ready to talk to you about some of the things that I have been making since I last recorded a video about a month, about a month ago. It is definitely knitwear season here where I am in Tassie and um, I have really been taking advantage of that. I've been wearing at least one handmade knitted item every day and I'm very lucky to have a very um, diverse and amazing knitwear wardrobe <laughs> because I've been working on it for quite some time and I feel so happy every day that I put something on that I have uh, not only made with my hands but also um, put in thought in with the colors and everything like that and yes it, it's really amazing and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do during the darker season when it's cold and days are short and you know everyone's a little bit gloomy having that knitwear is just so great let's see just a little short recap i guess what's been going on since my last video not really a lot. Life is busy and um, I, I have made time for my crafting and I have, what do I have to share with you today? Knitting and um, yeah, some finished things, some things I'm working on currently and I might fit in some dreaming and planning at the end of this video. I would like to say before I dive into all the things that I've been making, I would like to say a huge thank you to those of you that um, took the opportunity to grab one of my advent pre-orders after my last video. Um, I do still have some of the advent calendars, the 25 minutes gain advent calendars available up on my shop, rosehipisland.com. So if you're interested, go and have a look there for all the details about the calendar. I don't um, provide a whole lot of information about, um, nothing about colours or anything like that, um, because I would like it to be as much of a surprise as possible. 
But yes, have a look at the shop if you're interested in advent calendar or any of the other hand-dyed yarn that I have available there. And I should say that you can find me on Instagram as Rosip Island and I'm also Rosip Island on Ravelry and any of those places are great platforms to get in touch with me. Let me put down my tea and I am going to show you all of the things that I have to share with you today. First off, as you can see behind me, I have some garments that I've been working on and actually finished. The first one I'll share with you, I have started last time. And I'm so sorry um, to those of you that tune back in every time I have a video up and, um, and watch. I think last time I was a bit confused and I went on a lot about the strange brew, strange brew jumper that I had made for myself. I think I had already been through all of that information in the previous video. So it was a little bit of a repeat there, but I hope that was okay. So this jumper is a strange brew, um, I guess, jumper. A strange brew is a pattern or um, guideline information how to make a colour work jumper uh, from Tin Can Knits, a great designer um, duo. <laughs> they have some amazing patterns, not only because the designs are really beautiful, because, but also because they do write their patterns really, really well and they have a huge uh, range of sizes. So I have made a strange brew for myself and I share that in the last couple of episodes or videos and uh, this one was one that I made for my eight-year-old daughter. The last one I made was also meant to be for her but it turned out too big so I made this based on sort of correcting the issues that, that I had with my first one. I thought this would be too small and I think in the last video I did share that um, problem um, that it just seemed to yeah it just seemed like it was too small more like you know like a five-year-old size and not an eight-year-old size but I did measure it against one of the handmade jumpers that I have made for my daughter's my daughter just recently and it fits her really well and it did have the same width of the body and the sleeves so all I needed to do was to I had already bound off the body um, but I knew that if I just made it longer it would be the right size so I was working on the sleeves I think last time and um, I just made them longer to sort of be the same size as the one that I had already made before and then I ripped back the body and made it um, ripped it back until before the colour work and then knit it longer in the body as well and now this is a perfect fit for her and these are some DK um, yarns that I had in my stash I think the colour ones are just some random skeins from um what are they big and design and some con australian country spinner i think i don't know if that is even a company anymore but i had these little 50 gram dk skeins in my stash the main color is a recycled fiber um yarn from bendigo woolen mills and i did talk about this last time that i made myself a flax out of this that i really loved it was one of my first handmade jumpers for myself i did wear it a lot but it felt like it shrunk or maybe i <laughs> got bigger but it also had a lot of wear to it and it just looked a bit scrubby is that the word i don't know it just looked a bit worn i don't even know if i still have it um so that was an issue with this yarn but i thought the, the kids grow out of this stuff so quickly, it doesn't matter. Um, but I have since realised when I try this on my daughter that she normally would wear anything wool and she's fine with it. But with this one, she did feel like it was itchy. Uh, 
So that might mean that I need to put it on her on a really cold day when you don't feel that woolen feeling so much or just make sure that she has something long sleeve underneath it um, to protect her skin a bit. But yes, that's a strange brew out of some deep stash yarn that I had and um, the different, so strange brew, like I said, it's sort of a guideline instructions on how to make a colour work jumper and it has instructions for fingering weight, DK weight and Aaron weight, I think. And it has quite a few different um, colour work patterns, uh, but these ones I think I got some of them, like these ones here, I made up myself, I think, but these ones came from another uh, book with different colour work designs in it. And I had lots of fun making it and it was super quick. So that's that one, all done. And then on to the next one. Only just this morning, I wove in the ends, the last ends on my other finished garment that I have to share with you. And that's this one here. This is a tweed jumper, circular yoke, uh, just plain. And as I said, I just finished weaving in the last ends this morning. It still needs to be washed and blocked. The pattern that I used for this one is the stripes um, jumper by oh my gosh uh, Andrea Maori. <laughs> um, I made a stripy one before, and I really liked the fit of it over my shoulders and my body, so I decided to just do a plain one. And this is a yarn that I've had in my stash for a little while. I got it a D stash. Let me see if I can find the ball band again. It's a Debbie Bliss Fine Donegal. I got it in a D stash. It's the color 54019 and it's a wool cashmere yarn. I got it uh, on the Australian Knitters D stash thread on Ravelry. I had three 100 gram skeins and this is how much I have left after making this jumper. I did make this one longer in the body compared to my stripe one, a little bit longer in the sleeves as well, I think. I just really would like, I well, I wanted, what I was imagining and seeing myself uh, wearing it for was, you know, feeling really comfortable um, just for like very casual office wear or at home. And something that I would be wearing with trousers and maybe a layering piece because it's a, a, a fingering weight and it is not very wide. It doesn't have that boxy fit that a lot of jumpers um, have now, I think. And I have made a, a jumper in a similar yarn, a, a hot pink from pickles and I think basically these this yarns can't come from the same mill because they're so similar they look like they come out of the same mill uh, and what I made out of that yarn I also had 300 grams and I made the um, I can't remember I might insert a photo of that jumper jumper and put the details it is a raglan and it has the folded um, neckline and it is quite straight and square. And I, I love that jumper. I wear it a lot of home, at home. Uh, it is, it's a very nice weight of a jumper. It makes you feel warm, but you, it's, it's very comfortable to wear. But with this yarn, the, the double neckline just, doesn't look very neat and the boxy fit just makes it feel not so like pressed uh, like I would it, it feels more like a cozy home jumper than something that I would wear in the office but I thought with this color that is is quite a nice um not in your face <laughs> color it's a bit subtle uh, and I think it's, it's like it's a pretty beautiful colour, isn't it? It's beautiful. 
has all these little flakes. So I thought it's a nice fitted uh, design and it's um, lightweight. So I just sort of knew that, okay, I just want to have the single neckline because I know with this yarn that would look the best and just not make it so boxy. And I got exactly the result that I was looking for very very happy with it so this is going to be washed after i do this recording and um yes hopefully i can wear it as soon as it's dried it is that it is that time of the year when everything just seems to be wet all the time and it's really hard to tell the difference between cold and wet sometimes if things are cold i just feel like they're wet because everything just seems to be wet at the moment um, so that's that one. I really like it. Really, really like it. I think I cast this on on 1st of January this year. So it has been uh, on the needles for quite some time. But I must say that I have not been working on it very actively for most of that time. Um, I'm looking forward to wearing it. It's not like anything else I have in my wardrobe, actually, which is really nice. I found, actually, when I looked at it after it was finished, that the whole thing is is um, twisted. It looks like all the um, stitches sort of go with a twist. I don't know if that's something that's going to be evened out when I block it. It doesn't matter, though. It still looks great. So that's that one, my Tweedy, Tweedy Stripes, <laughs> the Tweedy No Stripes, I think I called it in my projects in Ravelry. I have one other thing that I actually finished since last time, and that's a pair of socks. And it's these, I think I call them Berry Vanilla Socks, because they're a vanilla sock with a Fish Lips Kiss heel and this yarn is a wool bamboo, I think it's only wool and bamboo, um, yarn from Spotlight. And it has the name Berry, I think, the colorway. So I call them my Berry, or Berry Vanilla Socks. I think I showed you this last time because they were almost finished last time, I think, that you can see here that the stripe sequence is off because there was a knot in the yarn and, um, the sequence was interrupted but that's fine i quite like them they're happy and bright and exactly like with this jumper here these have been on the needles for quite some time and now i only have one pair of socks that i'm working on actively well a pair of socks and a pair of slipper socks that i will share with you soon so that's those. So yes, two jumpers and two, no, and one pair of socks, which is really good. I felt for a while there that I had so many things that were ongoing projects and that is fine. But when some of them have close to six months sitting um, on the needles, it feels like you never get anywhere and you get frustrated or I get frustrated because there's so many new things that I would like to cast on. I have another cardigan that you have seen many times if you have watched my channel before and it is another step closer to being finished but still not totally there. The cardigan is Saga by Wenke Rewald. Um, I have shown this many times. It's made out of a Norwegian wool. This was a knit along um, held by Yarbu, a Swedish yarn company. So they had this available for free during the knit along. And um, they have a Facebook page where you can you know, talk about your making. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I cast this on when that knit along was happening. The pattern also has, or the design has the pattern down the sleeves, the color work down the sleeves. I decided when I had made my body, I wanted plain sleeves so that's what I did. 
I have talked about this many times before, but what I have done since last time is that I have steaked it. So I put in a crochet reinforcement and then I cut up in between the two reinforcements. I was going to also do a seam on my sewing machine, but I just couldn't really fit it in anywhere. So now I'm not really touching this much because it's it's sitting there very, um, I don't know, just I feel like it's going to come undone if I touch it too much. Um, so I've left it. I tried to pick up stitches from the crochet um, chain that I had put on here. And then I knitted plain and I was going to fold that over this raw edge to protect that from unraveling, but it just became too bulky. So I undid that and I thought, I think I have to sew on a ribbon. And I went and had a look at the ribbons I had and I didn't really have anything. So when Spotlight had a sale, plus you got $40 off if you spent $100, you know, they do this every now and then. I went and I had a look for buttons. And I have, I find now, and this is something that I've only sort of discovered or realized recently, is that if I go into Spotlight, I don't find anything. And if I go online, a lot of the things that are, online are not available in my lo local spotlight so for me it's much easier to shop online because everything is available to me and even i've you know discovered that if you put in an order of things sometimes the items will come from five different spotlight stores in australia so obviously they don't have everything in stock everywhere but if you go online and shop you have all the choices so I went in and I looked for the like a ribbon and I also looked for buttons to go with this. I thought when they had the sale plus sale on top of that, that was a good time to invest in a few of those things for finishing. Um, so I have, I've received a few things, but not everything. So I've received these two ribbons, but I have another one, I think, on the way in the mail. There, I would prefer them to be cotton or wool but these are polyester it's the best i could find i don't really know where to go to find these type of things um i don't really like this one for that but this one might work it's just very shiny it has a gold but i think that might be nice on the inside so i think i'll go with that but i'm just waiting for the other ribbon to arrive so i can make have all the choices before I make up my mind and then I looked at buttons and I have had these to arrive and I also have like a um, um, some sort of coconut shell or a, a brown I don't know if they're wooden I can't remember I have another a, a brown button arriving so I could e either go the very green and pick up the light green in there or I can go the purple and pick up the purple in there so i don't know if i want one of those or if i would like to go a little bit more low key and put the a brown button when i have them all um i'll make up my mind and choose one of them and then i will finish my saga cardigan and now that i have um steaked it I tried it on and I think it feels uh, it fits really really well. And now I want to make more similar ones, so I'll talk to you about that um, later. I am working on a few things. Uh, I did cast some things on now that I had other things that I had finished. I'll show you the socks that I am working on first you've seen these before i'm knitting them out of a painter nail that i had in my stash i think i had this done last time same thing here just the fish lips kiss heel and just a plain vanilla sock and then i have the second sock and i'm working on the foot on that 
So this is my work knitting. This is what I bring with me to knit on if I have some time in my lunch break. Uh, when it was a uh, nice warm weather, I'd go outside and sit on a, a bench or something outside and have a bit of fresh air, sunshine and do some knitting. It hasn't really been the case <laughs> in the last few weeks that I have weather like that to go out to. But yes, they're the socks that I'm working on um, for work knitting. Yes, yeah, so it's Peyton Nail. I don't even think you can get Peyton Nail anymore. Colour 768105. And I knit all my socks on 2mm needles because I'm a really loose knitter. And I quite like um, the Addy ones that have the longer needle and the shorter one on the, the small, what are they, 9 inch circulars. That works really well for me. So I'm working on, on them. My beautiful bag that I got from uh, Bendigo has a pattern, soft pattern on the back from Judith Mich Mitchell. Got that at Bendigo a few years ago. And I almost always have a sock project on the go in that. And then I have started, like, sort of a sock. It's another slipper sock. I don't think I had started this last time, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm very sorry if I repeat these things. I made slipper socks for my daughter just recently, the little Joe's Perfect Slipper Socks by Cozy Up Knits. And my daughter wanted more and she's been wearing the other ones quite a bit. So I got her to choose more of Sparkly Sock Yarn. This is Sparkly Sock Yarn from an advent, Roosevelt Island advent um, a few years back. Can't remember exactly when, maybe 2018. Can't remember now. Uh, and then I had this plain delicious sock yarn as well from from my hand dye. I think this is the Trader colorway, and these are just none named non. They not have, don't have a name. They're just from the Advent. So I got her to choose these, and then I thought I'll match them up with that because you need a DK weight or two fingering weight yarns for the pattern. And I did what I did last time, and I have almost the first sock done. So I think I started with those two and then it's those two and then the last one just fell on the floor but that's the other more warm purple. So I've got, I've got a nice fade there. The other ones that I made for her were I think yellow, blue, pink with a white strand of the sparkly sock yarn. And they have, they're much more block colours, whereas these fade a bit more, which is I really like. I, I'd like to have a jumper in this. <laughs> um, so I'm working on those. Um, it's, it's a really, I had these um, on the needles for quite some time, but I didn't really touch them. And then this morning after breakfast, I think I was up to here and I've just nipped rest just you know, by sitting relaxing a bit in the morning after breakfast. So once you work on them, they're really quick. So that's something that I guess I'll work on them a bit more now that I have some other things off the needles. So they're Joe's Perfect Slipper Sock in my own hand dyed yarn. And I think um, that's or for socks and, and those things but I wasn't going to do this because I thought I'm going to finish all my jumpers and then I'm going to cast on a new jumper and I had a plan and then I went totally um, off that plan <laughs> um, and I cast on a jumper is some really old stash that I have that I picked up at Spotlight on one of the sales because I can't help myself. And this was years ago. Um, this is a cotton wool eight ply. And you can see it was $3 a skein. And I think there was probably another sale on top of that. And when I purchased this was when my, my kids were still quite little. And I really liked making things for them in cotton wool blend yarn. 
and I, I think I got seven of these 50 gram skeins and I also got some um, purple three skeins I think just in case I needed to top up the seven and I've had these skeins ready in a project bag for weeks wanting to make something out of these skeins it's just I'm just I'm on a mission you you would know this now if you watched a few <laughs> videos especially this year I'm just on a mission to use up and make actual items wearable items useful items out of stash that I have got for you know I've got the stuff for a really good reason I think it is nice yarn and I got it at a good deal so I can't go wrong with using them and making something out of them but then you know you get more stuff and you get busy and especially with things that I got thinking about making things for little kids I don't have little kids to make things for anymore so it's all changed so I've sort of had to try to come up with new ideas and new plans new projects and with this yarn I was thinking about making one of the anchors t-shirts by Petite Niche I think it is and I had a look at it. I couldn't quite get the right gauge. And for some reason, because she's so popular, her patterns are hugely popular. Everyone's knitting them. It made me feel like oh, I should be able to some find something else, something new, something uh, that I don't see everywhere, which is silly. Because if you go with popular designers like Tin Can Knits, Jennifer Steingas, Andrea Maori, you get a good pattern and a good product but anyway sometimes the mind just is weird and um then just recently um Sora Stark Blackbird Knits a Swedish knitwear designer she released a new pattern for a jumper it's called Margit I think I, I get that right um and I received the pattern as a gift because I helped having a look at the English translation of the pattern. The pattern is for now only available on a new platform, Nordic Knitting Society, I think it's called. It's like a, a subscription where you get a pattern every month. And this jumper was one of these patterns. This is how I think it works. I haven't actually looked into it. So I started making Margit and this is it so again circular yoke and it has a little bit of a textured uh, striping I guess every so often and I'm off gauge again so I have to I'm knitting the smaller size but I think I have to use the measurements for um, the third size maybe because I am now on the smaller size, I am at the point where I should divide for the sleeves. And I feel like I need to go a little bit more down um, on my under my arm hole, I guess. So I might do another repeat of this textured pattern um, and then divide off for the sleeve. It's I think it's going to be quite roomy. It feels like it's, it's quite big, but you never know. At least it won't be too small. And it does look like it's just knit in cotton, I think. And, you know, of course, being a very discounted spotlight yarn, I had all these knots that I had to, you know, change. Well, I have to weave in those ends, basically. But that's okay. So I started on that. I knit all this in just a few days and then... I decided I wanted to finish the tweed jumper so I haven't touched this for a few days but I will start working on it now that the other things are off the needle so that's happening so that's my only ongoing garment that I'm working on but I have others um, that I have planned so I don't know if seven skeins will be enough for this I'm quite happy to make the sleeves a bit shorter um we'll see what happens i'm just i don't it's funny with this deep stash yarn that i've had for a very long time 
I don't really care so much about the end result. It's more about using up the yarn and um, someone will be able to wear the garments. Hopefully it will be me, but I'm not so fussed at this point. Okay, that's all the stuff that I have been working on, I think. I haven't been doing any sewing or any spinning or anything else. Um, but I'm happy with what I've accomplished just with my knitting, so that's good. As I said before, having finished things always makes me inspired to look for new projects, new things to make. And the Solga Cardigan definitely has inspired me to do more of similar things because I have more of that yarn and there's so many amazing colour work patterns out there and I really enjoy making them so I, want, I went looking for more of that stuff and had a look at some of the yarn that I recently was um, given by my mum and here is one of my recent project bags that I made little spotty fabric in there it's quite fun i stopped making project bags for a while but now i really enjoy doing them again so i received um some yarn from my mum from a swedish um mill clip and uh, quite close to where i'm from in sweden in southern sweden and let's see what did oh it's, it's the same yarn that Yarbu has, the Swedish Yarn Company, but it's, I don't know if it's spun in Klippan or it's just clip, it's spun by the company Klippan. Um, but anyway, they had these skeins for sale there at the mill or the outlet. I don't know really what it is, but yes. They have a lot of blankets and stuff, like the blanket actually that I'm wearing, these sort of woven blankets um so i got a few different colors and i found a pattern i have to insert a photo of it it's a pattern similar to to this one it was a knit along by that swedish company Yavu. they had a summer cardigan for a couple of years i think they did it um, where there was an inch long got a free they had the pattern available for free on their website and the inch long during the summer and one year I think normally it's by Maya Carlson one of the I think she's like the chief designer of Yabu she's a very uh, well-known and very talented amazing prolific Swedish knitwear designer so she's she designed this so my kofta, I can't remember which year this one was that I liked. I'll, I'll insert a photo. It has colour work down the bottom part of, of the cardigan. So I had these red and I thought they'll be a nice main colour. I don't really have a lot of red, but I really love red. And then I think I had this one before. It's like a royal purple. And then another new one that I got recently. Is this mustardy yellow I have a lot of green and first I looked at the red and the green and I thought and I had some neutral and I thought that's just too Christmassy but I think with putting them together with a yellow and a purple it will be really nice so we'll have those colors down by the bottom band in the color work and then it's red so that's something that I'm going to cast on next and maybe I can use one of these other ribbons and the other buttons for that but that's the main the main plan that I have but I have some other plans that might be further into the future but some recent purchases have inspired me <laughs> for some other things where I work now, I have about five minutes walk to a Vinnie's op shop. So that's one of our thrift stores in Australia. So it's five minute walks to a Vinnie's in one direction. And it's a large 
vinnies with a lot of stuff in it. If I walk the other direction, it's about 10 minutes and I get to a big Salvos, which is another op shop thrift store in Australia. So I think at least once a week, I would go to either of, of these two and have a look. And I used to, you know, I, I love op shopping for clothes for myself and just salvaging good quality, nice things that have been handed in for um, charity, I guess. But recently I have really been into looking at the, um, the craft materials in the in these shops and it's exactly like with clothes you just you have to just be there on the lucky day when you find something sometimes there's just nothing another thing i've been looking for is books i also um have been finding a lot of good especially kids books you can find so many good books at the library at school they also have a lot of good books so you don't really need to spend a lot of on books because the children always have you know all the books they could possibly read they have them available to them but i just like having books around so i've been finding some good books as well but yes i've been um looking at the craft section more and um yeah i've done some really good finds and actually one of one of the people or one of the channels that have inspired me a lot lately is the rosie apparel YouTube channel which is a um, very well seems to be a very happy friendly amazing uh, woman who's also based in Tasmania who makes all these amazing things and she likes to use a lot of re um, like repurposed materials and go and find things in the thrift stores to make new things and she's just so talented and yes very inspiring so check her out if you haven't already it's all sewing I think that she does um but I think yes watching her so I've already been going to the the op shops and the thrift stores but there's something she did in a video and it just made me think oh maybe I should have a look in the craft section as well and I have and I've I didn't find much at the start, but I kept having a look and then you know, all these amazing things appeared <laughs> to me. And first, I was especially looking for fabric because fabric can be so expensive and I'm not a really, I'm still learning so I can make mistakes and I don't want to have spent a lot of money on fabric. And I found op shops online with fabric. I found fabric sellers on ebay i've just you know explored all these different um places to get fabric um like secondhand fabric or very discounted fabric just to be able to keep having good materials but not spending a lot of money anyway i'll show you one of the really cool fabrics that i found recently and you know you have to know when you buy things secondhand and you don't pay much for it it will come in various states of <laughs> it's not always great so i found this and you see it's cut into and yeah it's it's a bit funny but this is a very super orange material and it's the um, it's i don't even know what this material is called but it's a bit shiny it's woven and it's a bit shiny on on the top and it has the fluffy side underneath um side and it's Oh, what the um, sweat pan, track pan suits were made a, out of in the 90s, I think. Um, I just thought it was so cool. I think I paid $5 for this big pile of, of these, which if you compare it to what you have to pay for new material like this, it's quite expensive. So it's, it's a knit, it's stretchy, it's quite thick and uh, it's super orange and... I don't know what it's made out of, um, but I'm going to make some pants for my eight-year-old and I just know that she's going to, to love them because she she already um, picks the pants that I've made for her 
um, you know, as a top priority if she can choose what to wear. So that's something really fun that I picked up. And I feel like I couldn't get this, you know, if I just went into Spotlight or a fabric store, um, I don't know that I would find something like this. I, um, I found that finding good, thicker knit material, fabric, is really, really hard. There's some really amazing shops online, but it's quite expensive. Um, so I haven't got to that point yet where I feel comfortable with um, buying those. So yeah, I'm super happy to find that. Then um, I went to one of these op shops close to work on a, I think a Friday at lunchtime. Didn't expect to find anything. And I found this display as I walked in and they, I can't remember what it was really. All I saw was the yarn. So they had this green, I, I don't know, I think it is a good quality one. It's quite old. Um, so I think it is wool and something else, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, it's what you see in, in jumpers now, really. <laughs> It's fashionable, isn't it? So they had a heap of these green ones and they had put them in the de decoration like the, it was the grass for things. So I, I saw them and I'm like, oh. And I I went and and checked with the, the lady in the store and I said, hey, can you buy the yarn that's part of that um, display? And she said, oh, yes. And I said, oh, it doesn't have a price. Oh, a dollar a ball. So I went and I grabbed all of these that I could see and I think I ended up with 10, 10 of them. They've just come out of the freezer. They've had two goes in the freezer and a bit of a, a sunshine, sunbathing <laughs> session in between. So I've got 10 of those. I, I think it will be really fun for a jumper. But also when I had a look, they had this yarn that they had made like the ocean or the sea in this display. And... Yeah, they were also a dollar a ball. And this is some really fun. It's it's one of those, not I don't know if they're called low yarn. It's like a, a crochet or knitted tube. And they've put this different type of, I don't know if it's fabric pieces or some sort of material in. So you get this bit of a tweedy look. So yes, I had a look and I, I picked everything from the display that I could find and I ended up with 10 of those as well. And I think that will make a super fun, maybe even like one of these, just something simple, but it will be so fun because of the yarn. So that's two garments, um, $10 each. And I think this, I think it is quite good, good quality material. And there's nothing wrong with it at all. So I was, you know, you go to these shops and you have a look week after week, find nothing. And then you go for a visit and you have two jumpers in a yarn that no one else has. So it, they will be super special and uh, very um, individual. <laughs> so that's um, something that I have... Um, inspired me recently and um, kept things fun being able to go and look for things in these shops that are close to my work that sort of brings in a bit of my crafting and making into my sort of boring work week <laughs> so I think that that's all that I would like to share with you this time I've had a really nice time out here in the studio under my blanket in my cozy jumper surrounded by all these things that I make and that I love and um, yes I always enjoy spending some time with you and I appreciate all of the follows all of the thumbs up comments love comments and if you haven't already you can hit the subscribe button and I'll be back in your feed on YouTube you can find me, as I said, on as Rosie Island on Instagram and on Ravelry. And if you would like to check out some of my hand dyed yarn, you can find that on rosehipisland.com. So that's all for this time, and um, 
I just really hope you, you have the best time with your making and that you stay safe and well and happy. And um, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.